from Ohio for those wonderful remarks and um, her continued leadership uh, here uh, in the House of Representatives. Madam Speaker, I rise today to discuss health equity disparities in America. Today, American minorities do not get the same quality of health care as our white counterparts. And it is, causes too many of them to die needlessly every single day. It is a problem that we must be solved immediately. The numbers tell the story. African-Americans are 24% more likely to die in this country than white Americans. The average life expectancy for a white American male is 75. For black American males, it is about 71. And African Americans between 18 and 49 years old are twice as likely to die from heart disease than our white counterparts. African Americans between 35 and 64 years old are 50% more likely to have high blood pressure than our counterparts. And one out of every five African American deaths could have been prevented if they received the same level of health care as white Americans. This should not be a surprise to anyone. Research shows that black Americans receive less and lower quality care than white Americans for a variety of ailments. One study of 400 U.S. hospitals found that African Americans with heart disease receive cheaper and older treatments than white Americans, not the newest technology available. They were less likely to receive coronary bypass operations. If they were lucky enough to receive surgery, they were discharged earlier regardless of post-surgery health conditions. More than that, African-American women are less likely to receive a mastectomy or radiation therapy if they're diagnosed with breast cancer. These disturbing facts are just part of the reason we need the Health Equity and Accountability Act. It would invest in solutions to make sure that all Americans had access to quality health care. It would help diversity of our country's medical workforce to improve the care in marginalized communities. And it would eliminate the gaps in medical insurance coverage, particularly for Medicare and Medicaid recipients. This is not all we must do. I am working diligently to improve the health disparities in how we treat colorectal cancer and limb amputations in this country. Colorectal cancer is the second highest cause of cancer deaths and the fourth highest cause of new cancers nationwide. This year, an estimated 150,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And more than 52,000 people will die from it. It is an ever greater problem in minority communities. African Americans are 20% more likely to be diagnosed with colorectal cancer than white Americans. And they are more likely to die from this deadly disease. Yet, colorectal cancer is one of the most preventable types of cancer detected, if detected early, I'm sorry. 
That is why I am taking the actions to save lives from this dreaded disease. In the 116th Congress, my Removing Barriers to Colorectal Cancer Screening Act was signed into law. It allows Medicare to cover procedures to remove cancerous growths or polyps during routine colorectal cancer screenings called colonoscopies. In addition, I introduced the Colorectal Cancer Payment Fairness Act to provide this new coverage by the end of 2023. We must introduce more legislation and take more actions to encourage more colorectal and other cancer screenings and save lives. Another area of health disparity is limb amputations. Specifically, limb amputations related to peripheral artery disease, or PAD. It is a disease of the arteries that is related to conditions that cause heart attacks. It can cause blockages in arms and legs that could lead to amputations. There are more than 200,000 PAD patients who's, who lose limbs to this disease every single year. And it is even worse in minority communities as usual. African Americans are three times more likely to have limb amputated than uh, other Americans. These patients are less likely to receive the proper screenings and treatment for PAD compared to white patients. Too few doctors who serve minority communities even know about PAD. So they miss the warning signs in patients that could have prevented amputations. But when, the, uh, when they understand PAD, doctors can order a vascular screening and target it specifically. I co-founded the Bipartisan Congressional Colorectal Cancer Caucus and also the Bipartisan Congressional PAD Caucus to create more awareness of these diseases. Awareness is key. But we must do more to close the gap in healthcare coverage and treatment. We must give all Americans the access to the best medical care. It will save thousands of lives every year in America. And it's simply the right thing to do. And with that, Madam Speaker, I yield back the remainder of my time. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Payne, for those remarks. Now I would like to yield the balance of my time to the gentleman from New York, my friend, Congressman, the Honorable Mr. Richie Torres. Yes. 